Hello and welcome back to the Utica Home Track Series first ever Royal Rumble here at the Snowstorm Speedway in Nome, Alaska. There's Oku Yamadea watching from the sidelines. She's preparing to go out, but until then she's going to be watching the racing action that's already been shaping up to be pretty exciting so far. We had a relatively large wreck last time and it took a lot of competitors out. Let's meet our next driver, Samantha Yankee, car number 73. Now this car was looking to be one of the favorites for the championship last year, but unfortunately after Kailani, that car just kind of dropped off, so car number 73 trying to bounce back for this season. And as you can see, sponsorship on that car finally. They've been having a really difficult time getting sponsorship for the number 73 machine, but now they have it in the form of Parkway Drugs, who's stepped on the car for the 2013 season. Samantha Yankee, part of the Yankee Motorsports team, which has had a, had a troublesome career in the Utica Home Track Series. The first year they came to the series, they were not locked into any of the races. They did manage to pull off a win, but it wasn't enough to get them into a locked-in position. 2012 was a better season. Both of the drivers won, with Samantha Yankee winning twice, David Yankee winning once. Dave Yankee will be coming up later in the Royal Rumble. Now, there is Seth Cole, car number 52, who has been really setting the pace as of late, he's been having a great run in car number 52, and that car has been really fast. He's hoping to pull off a good finish here today. As he runs underneath the 73 of Samantha Yankee, Jerry Guerra, car number 78, following close behind. Now, he already lost his teammate car of Joseph Bryant, who went out earlier in the event. So, Seth Cole is the last bullet for the NSCRA racing team. You see, he's he challenged by Samantha Yankee, who started first in this segment, and there's Jerry Guerra coming underneath, Zachary Robinson following close behind as we head down the straightaway, but he's a little faster. Oh, wait, no, no, there was a collision, and it looks like Samantha Yankee and Jerry Guerra are going to eliminate themselves. Samantha Yankee not going to stay in this long, neither will Jerry Guerra, who debuted last round. Ah, oh, it's a shame. They're hoping for good races today, and Jerry Guerra hoping, was hoping for a good start to his 2013 season. He's not going to get that today. They're both going to go out. As they limp around the track, there's Jerry Guerra, car number 78. As I mentioned last time, the 7-Up car will not be seen again until race 11. He's going to be running a DuPont paint scheme along with teammate Nicholas Guerra in honor of the, uh, the DuPont last ride. Now, there is Zachary Robinson, car number 5, as we head to our last lap of the segment. As he's showing behind Seth Cole, now Zachary Robinson's been in this for a while as well. He debuted the round after Seth Cole, and like Seth Cole, has been running pretty consistently. So, car number five, I expect him to do pretty well here today, and uh, maybe be a good addition to the sport here. About to see how he does in the actual season, as he's been kind of, he's been kind of hanging back in these past couple rounds, trying to make sure he stays in for a good amount of time. They come across the line as they head down the final stretch. Let's meet our next driver. There is Dustin Capps, car number 48, who is looking for a, uh, a good performance here today. He's the first of the Capps brothers who have all joined the series this year. They formed a team, Capps Motorsports, and uh, they're hoping to pick off some race wins here, to, here for this season. Unfortunately, they're not locked in to the Bristol race, so they're going to have to race their way in there. Dustin Capps not doing a bad job right now in that number 48 car. Now, with the, with the amount of white the color balance is being thrown off on the camera, you can barely see that number on the side there. Which, uh, is, it's a nice looking car, but, uh, it's not good for such a white racetrack. Our cameras are having a hard time picking up the number, but just remember that silver bullet is the 48 car of Dustin Capps. Now, as I mentioned, he has two brothers in this race, and they're going to be coming up later on in the event. And uh, may, maybe we'll have some uh, some sibling racing rivalry if they can all get on track at the same time. There's a, quite a few sets of siblings in this series. So there's a lot of opportunities for those kind of battles. As uh, Seth Cole is really running away from them as Zachary Robinson tries to pass Dustin Capps to the outside. Maybe get an elimination. But again, Zachary Robinson does not want to risk it. He's on the outside lane. If he turns Dustin Capps, there's a good chance he might get turned off track as well. So, he has to be careful there. Seth Cole, car number 52, the Hershey Chevy, running away with the field like he always been. We've had a couple drivers that have just been really good on track here today and uh, just started pulling away from the rest of the pack. 
John Cedian was one of them, Seth Cole is another one. Russell R. Curry was going to be that until his elimination. So, uh, it, it seems the Chevy camp is really fast today. They've had really good cars, they've been able to stay on track for longer. As you can see, three Chevys currently in the event here, and we usually don't talk about the Manufacturer's Championship too much in this series, but Chevy has dominated that for the past two years, so they're going for a three-peat for champions for the uh, Manufacturer's Championship. Unfortunately, Chevy has yet to win an actual Driver Championship. They've been won by a Dodge and a Ford, respectively, so this could be the first year Chevy takes the top spot. Scroll back to Zachary Robinson, continuing with his strategy of holding back now, we just had a double elimination. These drivers do not want to risk it this round. They want to really try and stay in this event. So they're, you can see they're kind of spaced out. They're not making any brash moves. They're not really going for eliminations. They're going to wait for the field to build itself up a little more before they start to get a little more racy. But car number five, having a great run today. And that car, it, it, we know that this car is fast. It's been fast in rounds. But, uh... He's just been kind of keeping it easy, and he doesn't have to worry about his rival that he made this race, Joseph Bryant, because Joseph Bryant's out of the race. He's also been kind of staying away from Seth Cole, just in case the, the team orders continue. That's the end of this round. Let's meet our next driver, the man, the myth, the legend, Billy Bishop. Car number 58, the Vitalogy Chevy. Yeah, another Chevy on, on the grid here today, so it's a big Chevy battle at the current moment. Billy Bishop. He attempted the final race of the 2012 season in Myrtle Beach with that 58 car. Unfortunately, he was not able to finish. He hit the pace car in a late race caution. And that sent him out of the race as Zachary Robinson rides up the track. But well, he's going to keep it. Billy Bishop is more noted for his infamous Rallycross series run where it just did not go well at all for him. He ran half the schedule and failed to finish all but one race. The race he did finish, he did relatively poorly, and so Billy Bishop having a relatively poor year in that, hoping for better in the Utica Home Track Series with his own single car operation. And I must say, I really like the look of that 58 car. The, a lot of the new paint schemes this year, I'm, I'm really enjoying this, so this should be fun to watch all these really nice looking cars drive around the track. The 58 car is one of those that I especially like. I like that. I like how it's kind of like that old have that old timey feel like the Vitality album it's based on, the Pearl Jam album. As Dustin Caps makes a move on Zachary Robinson, almost eliminates himself, but he keeps it on track. Billy Bishop's going to pick up the spot. Not sure if Billy Bishop's going to try anything. He's been kind of timid with uh, practice sessions and whatnot to make sure he doesn't wreck it. He's spent a half a season wrecking a car, so he wants to do the opposite for the U-Combs who's hoping to win. Seth Cole kind of dropping back to the field. This has not been been characteristic of Seth Cole's runs thus far. I'm not sure if they made any adjustments between rounds, which you are allowed to do. But, car number 52 not running as, as well. It could be just because of where he started. He started near the back. He's usually been near the front. And he just can't get by these cars. Seth Cole's not complaining about anything over the radio, so... I don't think that's going to be the case there being a problem. He could just be holding back, maybe. Not wanting to wreck it. We'll have to see as the story develops. He sits behind Dustin Cap, car number 48. As I believe they head to their final lap, as they head down that back stretch. Yes, now we're on the final lap. So that's Cole, running close behind Dustin Capps. In the lead of this pack is Zachary Robinson, car number 5, followed by Billy Bishop, as Zachary Robinson almost gets loose and goes off track going to keep it on though if they head through the last sets of turns for this round they just got to keep it easy and they should be able to make it to the next round Justin Capps running up on the back bumper of Billy Bishop could that result in something oh whoa they almost had a three car stack up there that Seth Cole might have avoided I think everything's going to be fine though as they cross the line let's be our next driver Neil Evans, car number 55, one of the early favorites for Rookie of the Year last year, but things really dropped off after that hard wreck at Watkins Glen. It really shook him up, threw off his momentum for the entire year. Now he's back, he's got a new paint scheme on that car, which looks really nice. It's got kind of like that aquatic look to it, the uh, blue and white. And he's hoping for some good finishes this year. He's uh, been close to winning a couple times, but says Cole rides up the track. And that was almost almost a dangerous, uh, dangerous slide. 
as they battled on the racetrack. Now, Neil Evans, the father of Matthew Evans, the one of the runner-ups for uh, the championship last year, hoping he can maybe challenge his, his son and uh, maybe even pick off a couple wins. This is a single car team. It's a relatively underfunded operation. They're only running this car in this series, and they're running a Rallycross series car for Matt Evans. So the funding's a little tight, but they might just be able to make it work. They got some Ford backing, and he's the only Ford on track at the moment, so he's hoping to stay there for a while. Billy Bishop almost gets sent off the track by Zachary Robinson, but it's not going to go into flourishing. And Zachary Robinson's not going to be able to take him off track. Though Zachary Robinson is racing pretty hard. I think he really wants to, but he doesn't want to risk his own car. He's really, he's been really saying over the rail, he wants to stay in this race. He wants to prove that he can, that despite where he started, in the random draw, he can win this. As he makes the pass on Billy Bishop, on number 58, they head around the turn. As Neil Evans slides up the racetrack, it's not going to go off though. You go back to him. He's battling with Seth Cole, car number 52, trying to make the pass on the outside. Now, Seth Cole, one of the top drivers of today. Having a really good run so far as he battles with Neil Evans in the number 55. There's Robinson and Bishop starting to catch up behind him. Dustin Cap has pretty much run away with the field at the moment, trying to go with the John Sandino strategy. Seth Cole, car number 52. Still ahead of this, this four-car pack is Neil Evans. He's going to lose a little ground. Zachary Robinson's going to gain a bit, and Billy Bishop gets a little squirrely in the turn. Here we go, we're heading towards our final lap of racing coverage. As we head to... No, 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 Neil Evans is going to turn Seth Cole around. And Zachary Robinson and Billy Bishop, we've lost four cars in this round. As they all go sliding up the racing surface. There's Seth Cole, who is having a great run. Unfortunately, he's going to be out today. Along with Billy Bishop, Zachary Robinson, and Neil Evans. And whoa, Neil Evans is going to make some contact with Billy Bishop. I don't think he's happy with him for uh, getting into Zachary Robinson. Showing them around. Dustin Caps, car number 48. He just needs to stay ahead of this pack, and he's going to be the only car to survive the round. Let's meet our next driver, but first, a replay of what happened. Now, this is what happened between Zachary Robinson and Billy Bishop. That was not on camera. Oh, uh, Zachary Robinson, he hits the apron, gets a little squirrely, goes into Billy Bishop, and knocks him off track. Now, let's meet our next driver, Oku Yamadaya, who uh, was at the beginning we saw watching the race. She suited up and get in, got into the car, the Japanese short track driver. Really trying hard to win today's event. She's the last chance for the Gas Tank Engineering Incorporated team. And she battles with Dustin Cap. This should be a relatively tame round. They don't want to risk their rise as Oku Yamadaya, as soon as I say that, almost drifts off the racing surface. Now for that last round, Neil Evans is credited for eliminating Seth Cole, and Zachary Robinson's credit was eliminating Billy Bishop, but they're also credited with eliminating themselves. Well, actually, no, I believe Zachary Robinson would be credited with Neil Evans. I, we have to review the tapes there. Anyway, the racing on track. Oku Yamadea driving that number 06 machine. That 06 car has a really interesting lineup for this season. Um... She will not be in the car next week. It will be Josh LeMayo for races 1, 2, and 3. Now for races 4, 5, and 6, it was originally said that Munit Peskic was going to drive. Um, that may have changed. Robert DeFrank has been signed for that car. Munit Peskic is fielding his own entry for his own team, the number 06B. I'm sorry, 06R. Excuse me. The car will also be split between Okuyama Dea for three events. Mateo Strau for three events, and Ray Davis for three events. In total, um, six drivers running the 06 machine, and whoever does the best in their average finishes will go on to race at Myrtle Beach. So, interesting uh, driver development. Oh, wait, we also forgot to mention, Inman J is also driving this machine. My apologies. Um... So very interesting driver development strategy for the 06 car. This 06 car is not going to win the championship, as championship is not decided by owner points, it's by the driver points. Um, same with the locked-in stats. So the 06 car not, does not have a chance to win the championship, but they're hoping to pick off some race wins this season. And uh, they have a fleet of really nice-looking cars. This is the Sailor Moon machine. 
And uh, I feel this car came out pretty well. I, I really like the cars in the Gas Tank Engineering Incorporated shop. They use a lot of gradients and they just have really nice looking cars. It's a shame that uh, Curly and Togger went out already. They, they actually did not last one round. So if Okuyama Dea actually makes it through this round on this final lap, she'll be the first Gas Tank Engineering Incorporated car to make it more than one round in the Royal Rumble, which is kind of a shame for the team. They, it's really a black mark to uh, be eliminated so early in these events. Okuyama Dea going to show the strength of the team. She's going to cross the line ahead of Dustin Capps. And this is going to end the round. Let's meet our next driver. Andreas Allen, car number 08, the GameStop machine last season. It's going to be this year as well, but a special scheme for the number 08 car is the Walking Dead car. In, in uh, honor of the AMC show, they are coming back for the new season. I believe it was in February. We are in March, a little late on that, but uh, still relative. I mean, people like seeing the Walking Dead car. Also, because GameStop is the sponsor, I expect maybe some video game sponsors from them. I, I'm, I'm not sure if maybe someone could... Uh, to refresh me of this. I believe the Walking Dead game could be coming out with either a sequel or DLC or something in March or May or something coming up. If, I'm not exactly sure, but if that is the case, they could have a car for that as well. But the O.A. and Dre Town Allen Motorsports is one of those is one of many teams in this series that's made up completely of family. Um, Alex Allen's going to be driving their 09 car for selected events, and Nikki Allen's going to be running a partial schedule in the o in the uh, 08X. Vladimir Petrov is also going to run in that 09 car for the road courses. So Andreas Allen is the only full-time member of the and the Allen Motorsports team, so he's their one shot winning this championship, basically. Okuyama Dea, car number 06, having a great car and just blasting past Dustin Capps. Now Dustin Capps saw he had a really good race car. But apparently it's not as good as Okuyama Dea, which they really spent a lot of time to set up. She does not get many races this year, so she is going to try her best in each one. This is her second attempt at a race. The first attempt was in Myrtle Beach last year. Unfortunately, she did not make the show. She just missed it. In a, sim in a similar sponsored car, the 06 Sailor Moon Machine, only it did not, did not have the final painted primer. It was just a white car with, a, with a yellow numbers. Justin Capps falling close behind, and he's trying to put on a show for the, uh, for the Capps Motorsport team at number 48. Now, he currently, on track, has been on the longest of these three cars. He still is not ahead of the record set by Seth Cole. He's been in uh, quite a few rounds. He's been in from round 8 to round 18, so great performance by Seth Cole. Dustin Capps hoping he can stay in long enough to match it. As he tries to make a pass on Okuyama Dad, these cars have been pretty spread out here today, and Andreas Allen's kind of falling back. They're reporting that that car is not as fast as the Capps machine or Yamadea's machine. But it's going to be a relatively tame round, I assume, as we prepare to add another driver. But wait, before I say that, Dustin Capps running on the bumper of Okuyama Dea. Tries to make a crossover move, not going to work, he's not going to put too much effort into it, just wants to survive to the round. He's going to make it, let's meet our next driver. There is Michelle Cedillo, car number 69, and that relatively loud number 69 car, the Juju machine. My god, that it, I'm getting flashbacks of the Megan Curly Rainbow Zen car, with the amount of color on that thing, there's pretty much every color of the rainbow on the back of it. A, very lime green car with purple and pink numbers, so this car is really eccentric looking. And Michelle Cedillo is hoping to put that eccentric car into victory lane as she battles with Okuyama Dea and Andreas Allen. Dustin Cap is falling a bit back. A little dodgy on the outside lane there as Andreas Allen almost turned her off course. But they keep racing and uh, still going at it. Now Michelle Cedillo is a former race winner. She won at Zandvoort in 2012. Though, though it was a upset victory, it was kind of undershadowed in comparison to other races that year. A lot of people don't remember the Zandvoort race too well. So she's hoping to win a higher profile event for the Bob Sandino Racing Group. 
driving the Chevy. Now, this is a complete number overhaul from last year. Last year, she was the number six machine. As we check Andreas Allen, who's running three wide, and he's going to get turned by Dustin Cap. Slides in front of Michelle Sedin, and she almost goes off track. Andreas Allen slides to the top of the racetrack, hits the wall, and almost overturns that race car. And unfortunately, the 08 car is not going to last very long. He goes out of the event. But Shane, he was hoping for good things in this event. He's the first of the Allen siblings, so the other two have a shot to take advantage. But did Michelle Sedin go off track? No. Just barely kept on. One tire stayed on the racing surface. So car number 69 is going to be safe, but just barely. And Lady Luck is on her side as car number 69 drives around the track. But it's, she, at the current moment, she is trailing behind Oku Yamadea and Dustin Katz. But that was a very scary moment for the number 69 car. That could have been the end of the race for her. Oku Yamadea keeps the race lead. Having a great run today. And the row six Dodge. We were starting to get a battle of the manufacturers. It was uh, it's uh, Okuyama Dea and Andrea Allen and Dodges and the Chevys of Dustin Capps and Michelle Sayadino. Unfortunately, that's not gonna. Uh, the Dodges are gonna be a little outnumbered as Okuyama Dea is only one track. Is this is the first Dodge to really been be doing this well here today. It's been mostly a Chevy game. Like Dustin Capps here, who has been really dominant. But he's uh, trailing behind Okuyama Dea. I don't think there's going to be any more elimination this round unless they decide to barrel off track on their own accord. Three cars are going to survive this round as Andreas Allen goes out of the event. We head toward the finish line and to a new round. Let's see who joins us. Brandon Bain, who has been dubbed the Bain Train. In the Rallycross series, you gotta love the nicknames for those guys in that series. Um, with the Ron John paint scheme on, and they switch manufacturers from Ford to Chevy. They they know the Chevys perform very well. But they want to switch to a Chevy, which will uh, hopefully result in them winning some more races. Brandon Bain had a huge struggle last year trying to deal with all the road courses. He joined the series midway through, and for the long time viewers of the series, you know that the second half of the year is riddled with road courses, which are not Brandon Bain's specialty. So he's happy that he's on a he's on a uh, speedway track at the moment. He feels he can do better, but again, it's really cold out here, icy conditions. We picked the worst time of the year to go to Alaska. So Brandon Bain's going to be on a very slick race course, which will probably act kind of like a road course. Only he's going 200 miles per hour, so this is a very very precarious racetrack, so Brandon Bain's got to really focus, and I really like the design on the 21 car as well, it's got that kind of wave going on the side there, and the board on the roof, really doing his sponsor justice, the Ron John surf shop machine, as Dustin Kapp makes a move to the inside, followed by Oku Yamadea, now Michelle Sinil dropped back slightly, but it's not out of this yet, now you got to be careful when you start running in these kind of packs here, because this could result in elimination. As Dustin Capps is running close behind Okuyama Dea, I think was trying to make it three wide, but thought better of it. This is one of the first sessions so far that Okuyama Dea has not led. This has been uh, Brandon Bain's round for the most part. As Dustin Capps has been edging to the inside for the entire event. We'll have to see if he can make the pass work. Or it, maybe he's going for an elimination. We'll have to see. We have four cars on track, and we've seen eliminations with four cars on track before, so it's entirely possible, especially the way Dustin Capps is aggressively driving right now. Really digging toward the inside of the track and trying to wedge his opponents off the racing surface. Michelle Savino is caught up with all this racing action going on near the front. She wants a piece of this as well as Okuyama Dea squeezing by. I don't think that's a good idea, but it's going to work for the moment. She's basically trying to get ahead of Dustin Capps. So Dustin Capps doesn't send her flying off the racing surface. But Dustin Capps not giving up yet. As Okuyama Dea almost goes off the racetrack. Brandon Bain is close on the inside. And oh, three wide! We're going for three wide here. This is insane. Contact! Brandon Bain and Okuyama Dea. But no car is going off track just yet. But Okuyama Dea just riding the edge there. As they head to the line, looks like everyone's going to survive this round. We head to the finish line, and everyone finishes. Let's meet our next driver.
Brian Valentine joins the mix in what was already a very intense battle with Brandon Bain there. Brian Valentine, the season one champion and a two-time winner in the Utica Home Track Series. is on track at the moment in a newly repainted number 66 machine, the Battlefield Cycle Works Dodge. And this is another really nice paint scheme that's on track here today as this car works his way around the racetrack. And he's working his way to the front. That was the fifth place star. He's already worked his way up to third in the span of one lap. He's drafting close behind Okuyama Dea. Now Valentine, he went winless for the longest amount of time, but then won the championship. Last year he got his first wins, but did not win the championship. So I'm not sure what his strategy is for this season as he rubs up against the side of Brandon Bain. Whether or not the 66 car is going to go for wins or consistency. Overall, Ryan Valentine's been one of our most consistent drivers. He's been one of the few drivers to get a top five finish in both the first and second season. So you can tell that the 66 car, they know how to keep that car near the front. And he's at the front right now as he leaves his pack of cars. Though being first on track does not matter unless it's the final round. Brandon Bain, the number 21, to the outside. Battling with them as they go three wide as Okuyama Dea goes to the inside. Yamadea, and oh, Brandon Bain is off course. Okuyama Dea is going to tap Brian Valentine. That's going to send Brandon Bain going home for today. And it's a shame Brandon Bain did not get to go on track very long. It's, it's kind of difficult for these drivers if they didn't get much track time. Because they brought all their equipment up here and they didn't really get much reward for it. As, wait, no, he's going to clip Dustin Capps, the longtime driver. And he's going to go off track as well as they slap the track. Oh! Brandon Bain and Dustin Capp hit the wall in the death flip for both of them. Oh my god, a hard impact for car number 21 and number 48. As we cut back onto the racetrack, Brian Valentine still leading the pack, but oh, a disappointing end for Dustin Capp and Brandon Bain. Not only do they lose the race, but two heavily damaged race cars they have to repair in time for Bristol. Oh, it's unfortunate for both of those cars. And now it's a battle of the Dodges near the front. Valentine and Yamadea with Michelle Zanino and the Chevy trailing in third. Valentine running against uh, the rookie, Oku Yamadea. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be experience versus kind of a newbie to the sport. That's car number 06, trails in the back bumper. This is the final turn as they head to the line. This will end the round. We have two eliminations, Brandon Bain and Dustin Caps. They cross the line. Let's meet our next driver. Jeffrey Thin Guy, car number 62, one of the Rallycross Series drivers. He's been running several um, part of the Rallycross Series schedule for Chaos Motorsports. He's rounding up his events. He's flown up here to Alaska. And uh, he just came from Toyota Japan, his final race. We won't spoil what uh, what he got there. So uh, you'll have to watch that race. We won't we won't tell you. The Finn guy knows. But Finn guy, car number 62, a repaint on that car. YouTube now is sponsoring. You see Nan Cat on the side there, hoping to give him a little extra speed. As Brian Valentine works his way to the inside. And there's a little contact between uh, Oku Yamadea and Brian Valentine. They've been really competitive. And now Yamadea almost goes off the racing surface. But Finn Guy, car number 62, the JFI team, hoping to get his drivers into some good finishes. He won a race last year at Ruin Lace of Sarks, which uh, came as kind of a surprise. We weren't expecting it. He got the pole and he won the race, despite losing it for a good portion of it. He won the race with a really nice drift move through the dirt, which kind of inspired him to go into the Rallycross series, which is heavy dirt. 62 car, hoping to have a good run this year. Michelle Cedino leads this pack. They made some adjustments between rounds, and that car is running splendidly. It's currently in the lead. That bright number 69 car really stands out against the snow in comparison to a couple other cars, especially some of the ones with white or gray paint schemes. Like it's, it's going to be really hard to miss this car on racetrack. It's, it's possible. It rivals Megan Curley's car. I, I can't believe it. Well, not Megan Curley's current car. That's a standard Pepsi machine. But the car she ran for the uh, 2011 season, which was just all over the place with the colors. As Brian Valentine tries to make an elimination move, but it's going to slide. Okuyama Dea starting to lose this pack. 
car is not running as quickly as it was before, but it could just be that Brian Valentine and Michelle Sanino have better equipment at the moment. We know Valentine does. He won a championship. He has enough to afford the equipment needed to run at optimum pace. As Finn Guy follows close behind Okuyama Dea. Now, with Justin Capp's elimination last round, Yamadea has currently been on track for the longest duration of time of these four drivers, so she's the one with the most experience on track. But this car has been kind of bobbling. It's been really close to eliminating itself as Finn Guy makes the pass underneath. And there goes Brian Valentine riding near the top of the racetrack, trying to make a pass on Michelle Cedino. Did not work. If Michelle Cedino keeps the lead, they head down the straightaway. Don't want to try anything yet. They head to the line. And that ends the round. Let's meet our next driver. Now, here is Brian Benoit running for the year in that number 75 New York Knicks Chevy. Now, this is the result of a radical decision by Tyler Benoit. He has released driver Matt Evans and is now running a team of all Benoit family members. It's going to be Father Brian, Brother Justin, and Tyler. So, we'll have to see how this team works today. It's a very risky move getting rid of the almost champion. But Benoit feels it's going to work out as Brian Benoit leads this pack in the number 75 machine. Brian Valentine gets really close to the back bumper of it, but the 75 saves the lead. Now, Brian Benoit has one race of experience before this. He ran the most sport event in 2012 in place of then-suspended driver Max Skinner as the replacement driver back when Max Skinner was one in the series and two on Benoit Motorsports. Unfortunately, Benoit did not have a good race was very slow on track for most of the day, and it was involved in the huge pileup, which no one expected to happen at most port. But Brian Valentine, not going to give Brian Benoit an inch. The battle of the Bryans out front as Michelle Zidio and Okuyama Dea start to catch up. Close behind, Jeffrey Finguy sits in fifth. Here we go, these two cars battling. Could, could this be the result of an elimination. The Bryans really battling each other hard, but there goes Okuyama Dea and Michelle Cittadino battling in close competition. Brian Valentine is going to be the winner on that as he goes to the lead. As you can see by that number 75 card, they have kind of like that basketball court style paint scheme. Which I personally enjoy. It's, it's a very creative car. As Michelle Cittadino goes to the outside of Brian Benoit. He's starting to lose some ground. He was great on the start, but things have started to drop off as he's continued through this round. Okuyama Dea falling close behind as Brian Valentine is starting to pull away from this pack of cars. That car has been really good. And it's been challenging Okuyama Dea, who has not been leading as much. I think they probably made an adjustment that really didn't work. They head through the turn as they go on to the final lap of this round. As well, Michelle Cedino almost gets sent off the course by Brian Benoit, but Brian Benoit falling close behind. Very close call by Michelle Cedino, almost getting off track there. Okuyama Dea comes in for the battle. Could they make a final turn elimination here right now, or will they wait it out for one more round and see if we can get another driver into the mix? Go, Yamadea running low, but it's going to chicken out. Not going to do it. Looks like everyone's going to survive this round as they all go across the finish line. Now, let's meet our next driver. Now is the second of the Caps brothers, Nick Caps, who unfortunately not going to be able to battle against his brother Dustin, but Dom Caps is still yet to come onto the entry list. As there's three wide, Michelle Cittadino making a risky maneuver there. Nick Caps is going to get into Ryan Valentine. And, oh, contact! Brian Benoit's going to turn around Michelle Cedino. And, oh, oh, that's a liar. And going to land on the roof of the 06 car of Okuyama Dea. She's also eliminated. A terrible wreck on track. That's going to result in both drivers going out of the race. Brian Valentine in the lead in an absolutely horrible wreck. Cars slipping and landing on each other. And it's going to result in two eliminations thus far. Brian Valentine leads the pack with Nick Capps in close second. We didn't get to talk about him too much. We'll talk about him in a bit. 
but a really scary move. And uh, I, I believe that elimination was carried out by Brian Benoit, car number 75. So good job for first elimination. Now we're back to Nick Caps. Now, for this paint scheme, I feel that the owners of M&M felt that the Kyle Busch variant of the M&M's car did not have enough M&M's on it. So they've completely loaded up the livery with M&M's, which makes it one of the most colorful cars on track and one of the most delicious. Car number 18, driving around the course in the Chevy, hoping to have as good of a run as his brother Dustin, who was in this for a long span of time. As car number 18 running around the track, he's hoping to uh, do as well as Kyle Busch without having the same attitude. As he's being trailed by Brian Benoit, who I think a lot of people are fearing now. He just eliminated two drivers in one fell swoop. Jeffrey Finguy has been running in the back of the pack for all of these rounds. So either that could be a strategy thing or his car is not performing well. Either way, he's keeping that number 62 car in the race. He's kind of becoming the Jeff Evans of this particular part. As he kind of runs behind Brian Benoit. Now the 62 car. It's kind of funny, you see Nyanka on the side there, and you think that car is going to instantly lead the race, but this car has actually been the slowest on, on track. Well, not anymore. Hopefully Amadea and Michelle say, you know, their, their cars are the slowest. They're going zero miles per hour. They're both out of this event. After some horrible wrecks, we'll show a replay at the end there. We'll get see if we get word on the condition of the two drivers. As Brian Valentine leaves this pack and has got a hefty gap over Nick Caps, so I don't think Brian Valentine is going to be eliminated anytime soon as they head through the final turn and down the final stretch as they go to end this round Brian Valentine will be the first one across two cars limited let's look at the replays this is on board with Michelle Sadino car number 69 it's gonna get turned and just gonna go sliding up the racetrack a scary feeling as it's a feeling of helplessness hits the wall huge flip and just lands on top of the 06 car and we start to lose the camera there. Now here's on board with Oku Yamadea. He gets sent off by that clip. And you'll see the car come crashing down on top of Oku Yamadea. Terrifying sight. Both drivers are okay though. Now it's the defending champion, Jamie Murphy, car number 28 with a new paint scheme. Not Northern Texas Pipe like we had uh, last season. This is mane and tail on the car. And, uh, fresh new color scheme for that machine. Now, if you don't know what mane and tail is, it's quite the interesting sponsor. It's apparently a shampoo that can be used for both horses and human beings, so they'll make anything and put it on a race car. As Jamie Murphy, running a little, little towards the back of the pack here, trying to compete with Nick Caps as they clip, and they both go off track, so very quick run for Jamie Murphy and Nick Caps, so we didn't even get the talk too much about Jamie Murphy before she eliminated herself, but yes, the defending champion coming back for a season has yet to win a race thus far, so it's been kind of a power. If you're not winning any races but are in the top 10, you're probably going to win the championship, or at least be considered it. So Murphy, I'm not sure what she's going to be going for this season, same with Brian Valentine, could be for consistency, could be for the wins, we'll have to see as the season plays out. But sadly, the 28 car already eliminated. And this was the first of two LeGray racing cars to go out on track. The stable has three cars, but they did not bring the Shelby LeGray machine to the racetrack. Um, they're saving that for a one-off entry in Darlington. It's going to be the number 28S. As the 28 car, I really like the paint scheme on this. It, it's hey, sort of like the Derek Coke car from the, uh, from what was it, 95 or 96? I believe he had this same sponsor, only with a number 12 machine. I Was it a Ford? I forget if it was a Ford. Jeffrey Finguy having a much better round than previous. He's running second on course right now, right behind Brian Valentine, who we already know is going to be leading this round. He's just been doing amazing. Turn 66, and I wouldn't be surprised if that car made it all the way to the end. As Jeffrey Finguy is actually starting to lose him a bit. Jamie Murphy, who's on track right now, I don't think she's going to be going for too many eliminations. She's usually a, a cleaner driver. She's not going to really interfere with the other drivers. She was the one that eliminated 
herself and Nick Cap, so it's not like she holds a grudge against any of these drivers. So she's probably just going to just see if she can get to the lead of this segment just to prove that she has a very fast race car and then park it for today. As Finn Guy, car number 62, running to the outside of Murphy. They're battling there. Brian Benoit's been a little slower this round and kind of keeping it easy. Nick Caps has actually caught up to the 75 car, as you can see in the background. Car number 28 and 62, battling it out. Finn Guy's not going to go for the elimination because this car's already eliminated the 28 machine. They head to the line to end the round and we'll head to the 28th round of the Royal Rumble of what looks to be a lot of rounds. Let's meet our next driver. Now, this is the last entry for the Royal Rumble. Not the last car that's going to go up today. We still have quite a few cars on, on the... Uh, on the randomized roster, but car number 87 was the last one to actually physically go up to the clipboard and sign up. And oh no, we have elimination! Brian Benoit and Brian Valentine, they go sliding up the racing surface. And oh, that car is going to go flipping as Brian Valentine tumbles at number 66 car, which was a great machine, and they're going to have to fix that car. And it looks like Brian Benoit is going to tumble as well, and that's going to leave two cars on track. Jeffrey Finguy and Jake Smith. And now Finn Guy can finally say he's leading a segment. Because Brian Valentine has plummeted that car off course, and it's a shame. He was hoping to bring that car to Bristol. Valentine felt he had a really good car underneath him. But now we check out Jake Smith. Anyway, last minute entry. And this is a very complicated paint scheme for the uh, SKF Chevy. So now it's a Chevy battle on course. As our only dodge in the event for the round, um, Brian Valentine is going to eliminate himself. So we'll have to see how Jake Smith does this year. I don't know much about Jake Smith. I haven't seen him in many other series. I'm not aware of his racing background. But Jake Smith, Card number 87, a welcome addition to the sport. And I wish him the best like all the other competitors that are currently trying for the championship. He's also going for Rookie of the Year honors. That number 87 car is a very snazzy livery. It has a... Uh, Stripe down the middle, it's got that red, white, and blue paint scheme. Very, a lot of different geometric shapes and whatnot going on with it. And also, it's a very different style of number. It's kind of a pixel, pixelated number. Similar to uh, Austin Ogo's car, only without as much noise to the, uh, to the numbers itself. A single car operation. Jake Smith is the team owner. Jake Smith Motorsports. I'd be confused with Tyler Smith Motorsports, which has closed down its doors for the 2013 season. Now, Jeffrey Finguy, the lead car in this pack of two, with Brian Benoit and Brian Valentine limiting themselves. The two Bryans, they've been kind of having a battle, and I think that could be a rivalry that could continue past the Royal Rumble. And it's kind of it's kind of unusual. Finguy and Smith, we weren't expecting much of them, but they're still in the event. Benoit and Valentine, they were considered some of the best on track at the moment. Benoit for his elimination ability and Valentine for his speed, his pure racing speed. And they both go out this round. So it's going to be very interesting how things play out for the future rounds. As we head to the final turn, down the final straightaway, Finn Guy, car number 52, is going to win the round. But not the war as we have another competitor coming out soon. But first. We are going to take a replay of Brian Benoit and Ty and uh, Brian Valentine. They slapped the course. We saw a Valentine flip. Let's see what happened to uh, Brian Benoit. And an odd flip there as the car flips one way and flips the other. We'll be right back after a commercial message for the third part of the Royal Rumble. I hope you will join us back for it. And this is a very historic event. Coming up for the Royal Rumble is going to be Chris Kyle, Kevin Ulrich, Willie Decker, and many more. Hope to see you there.